Let's take a look at a calculation involving the balanced equation. How many grams of carbon dioxide should be produced from the combustion of 250.0 grams of C3H8? We actually already have all of the pieces to solve this problem, but it's going to take a bit of work. We're going to need the balanced equation and we're going to need molar masses because we need to break down this problem. We know the grams of C3H8. We already know how to find the moles of C3H8. We can use the molar mass. But that's not what we want. We don't want moles of C3H8. We want carbon dioxide. The only thing that we have to get from moles of C3H8 to moles of carbon dioxide is going to be our balanced equation. So we need that balanced equation. We've balanced this equation before. From the balanced equation, we can see our ratios. So C3H8 here, there's one. CO2, because carbon dioxide is what we're looking for. Sometimes it helps to write the formula out. We can see the mole ratio there. So we do have a mole ratio that's going to get us from the moles of C3H8 to the moles of CO2. So we're going to use our mole ratio from the balanced equation down here. And finally, we're looking for grams of carbon dioxide. So we're going to use, so somehow we're going to get from moles of CO2 to grams of CO2. We already know how to do this using the molar mass. So let's take a look at how we actually go through all of this. So before we start, we want to make sure we've got our balanced equation. And we need our molar mass of C3H8 and carbon dioxide, or CO2. Notice I only need the molar mass for the compounds I'm working with on this problem. I don't need the molar mass of O2 or the molar mass of H2O right now. I just need C3H8 and CO2. That helps to manage the amount of work that you're doing. All right, let's take a look at how we actually work through this step by step. So I need to find my molar masses for C3H8 and CO2. Here I've gone through the math already. If you want to pause the video and verify that you can get the same answers using the periodic table from the course, then I do suggest you do so. So our molar mass of C3H8 is 44.0956 grams per mole, and the molar mass of CO2 is 44.0095 grams per mole. They just happen to be pretty similar in molar mass. Molar masses can vary widely from very small values, uh, you know, two or three, all the way up to, you know, thousands of, molar, of grams per mole. So just, you know, be aware that there's a lot of variety. I'm going to first convert my grams of CO, C3H8 into moles. So if we look at Converting from grams to moles, remember we can turn our molar mass into a conversion factor. So I'm going to convert my grams of C3H8 into moles of C3H8. We've done this before. 250.0 grams of C3H8, if you need to, go ahead and put that over 1, times 1 mole for every 44.0956 grams of C3H8 gives us 5.669 moles of C3H8. Now we want to get from, so remember I made that plan at the beginning. I'm going from grams C3H8 to moles C3H8. My next step, I'm going from moles of C3H8 to moles of CO2. So if we look at our balanced equation, we had one mole of C3H8 equals 3 moles of CO2. All 
I can use that to create my conversion factor. So for every three moles CO2, one mole C3H8. So I want to make sure my moles C3H8 are going to cancel. Oh, yeah, that's canceling. Okay. We multiply through, I get 17.01 moles of CO2. My last step, I'm going to do converting moles of CO2 to grams of CO2 using that molar mass we already calculated. Seventeen point oh one moles of CO two. Gonna put that over one, so we line everything up. Times forty four point zero zero nine five gram CO two for every one mole gives us seven hundred forty eight point six grams of CO two. Notice that I want to make sure and round to the proper significant figures at each step. None of these steps are particularly new, but it is very very important to track. Think about. What is my step? What am I doing next? Do make a plan. Write it out. Make sure you keep track of that plan because these calculations can get very complicated. But we're talking about just over and over conversion, conversion, conversion. You just need to make sure that you're keeping track of those units throughout or this can become quite a mess.